This lecture is just going to touch on some of the things we can do with a health marketing campaign. And so health marketing campaigns can be so much fun. I hope you've realized that by now. Here's an example of one of them from England. It's an anti-smoking or a smoking cessation campaign. And it's very clever. They've got the guy, um, his mouth is strategically placed right over the exhaust pipe of that bus. And if you looked closer, you would see uh, it says ready to quit. And then it gives a website on where people can go to um, start their smoking cessation journey. And then also in this uh, last lecture, I just wanna make some final points on your final paper. So be sure to watch the whole lecture. Okay, I just wanna give some examples of what we can do with health marketing campaigns. One of the basic things that we can do is we can use a campaign to help to increase knowledge or create awareness about a topic. So this is typically done when um, a new scientific understanding comes about. So for example, on the bottom, I've got some folic acid pills. And not too long ago, scientists were not aware that folic acid was linked to neural tube defects. But through scientific research, it became um, evident that when women don't have enough folic acid in their body, then uh, during the pregnancy process, neural tube defects can happen. And so once this was discovered, it was necessary to start to do campaigns to increase awareness. And so now most people have heard of this link and it's due to the success of these awareness campaigns. We can also use health marketing campaigns to try to nudge people into thinking differently about things. So for example, on the top is a picture of a campaign material that is aimed at helping women to um, successfully breastfeed. But this particular campaign was aimed at the public's discomfort in um, having women breastfeed in public. And so uh, many states have had um, laws on their books that consider breastfeeding in public an act of public indecency. And um, technically you can be fined, you can be fined for indecency for breastfeeding in public. So this campaign was kind of poking fun at that, at just kind of showing how absurd that is. It's a baby being um, arrested for the crime of breastfeeding in public. And so it's kind of using a humorous approach to help people think differently about a topic. We can also use health marketing campaigns to refute myths and misconceptions. And that's what this smoking cessation campaign is trying to do. So they uncovered a myth that um, many smokers have that they've tried to quit in the past and it just didn't work. And so they consider themselves a permanent smoker. And so this campaign is attacking that attitude or that belief that um, if you tried to quit and were unsuccessful, that somehow you will never be successful. And so it's taking the angle of every try counts. It's aiming to change the attitudes and beliefs about what it means to quit and um, encouraging smokers that even though you've tried in the past to quit, all of that does add up and it helps you to be more successful on your future attempts. So let's keep trying. A campaign might be aimed at showing the benefit of a behavior change. So over on the side, I've got a campaign material, the one with the sneakers. This campaign is aimed at people with arthritis to encourage them to be active. And if you look closely, you can see on the sneakers, there's a prescription that basically prescribes physical activity for easing arthritis symptoms. And so many people believe that if you have arthritis, that if you are active, it's gonna make it worse. When in fact, um, it can make it better. So being physically active is part of the, the treatment plan. It can help you to deal with your arthritis and help to ease symptoms by being active. And so it's showing the benefit of a behavior change. Sometimes um, health campaigns are used to increase the demand for a health service. So every summer, for example, the school lunch program um, offers free summer lunch programs in certain segments of the United States, especially in areas where there's a large amount of low income communities. Um, a lot of kids that are out for summer that depend on school lunch can go hungry because there's no school lunch during the summer. 
except that there is. There's a summer lunch program, but um, it needs to be advertised extensively because the kids need to know where to go. So the community needs to bring the children to the center location where there is summer lunch being given out. And so a lot of campaigns are done around this. Campaigns are sometimes used to advocate for a policy change. And so on the bottom, I've got a screenshot from um, the Hunger Free America campaign, which is a hunger awareness campaign. They try to raise money and donations for hunger relief. But another aspect of their campaign is to lobby uh, for policy that help the hunger community. So this is a form that you might find on their website where you can submit your own name and email and it's automatically added to a petition that they are going to submit to legislators um, to continue funding of anti-hunger programs. Many times a health marketing campaign is demonstrating or illustrating healthy skills. So for example, here's a campaign, the, um, the hand holding the beer mug. This is a campaign out of New Zealand, and it's an interesting campaign because it's aimed at getting people to drink less. It's not aimed at getting people to, to stop drinking. Um, it's just aimed at the beer drinker, and it's trying to get them to consider rotating their beer with water with the ultimate result of being and that you drink less over the course of a night. And so they call it beersies. It's quite a funny campaign. It's got that New Zealand humor in it. Um, sometimes a campaign is aimed to prompt. In fact, almost always they're aimed to prompt action. And so in that same campaign that's called beersies, they have another arm of it where um, they've got these uh, images where it says ever been hurt as a result of your drinking yeah or nah i can't say that in my new zealand accent but these posters would be up strategically in places where people have been hurt by drinking and so particularly it's in er's emergency rooms um, it's on t-shirts and so when um, people arrive at the emergency room very often they have been drinking and they've been harmed because of that drinking or maybe someone was drinking in their um, in their group and that's why they're now in the emergency room and so this is trying to prompt action because it's telling you if you answered yeah maybe we can help you call the alcohol helpline and so this is an example of um, placement being critical okay let's talk about your final assignment so instead of having a final exam you have a final assignment and it's called the health marketing analytical report so you get to apply everything you just learned about health marketing um, campaigns and you get to select a campaign that's existing it's in the directions and you're going to assess it and so you'll want to choose one of the campaigns that's listed in the posted directions you need to read the directions carefully. So please don't dive in without fully understanding and reading those directions. And then also the directions do ask you to copy and paste the questions. I really do mean it. I want you to copy and paste those questions and then answer each one. And so copy and paste question one and answer question one. And so they become, the questions become subheadings, so to speak. And so it makes it very easy to follow along and it makes it easy for you to make sure you're hitting all of the required components to get a good grade. So there are three parts to the health marketing analytical report. Part one, you will be assessing the evidence. And so you'll be assessing what's the evidence that they even needed to make this a campaign. Why is this a problem? Um, and then you will talk about what do they want people to do? What is the main product? And then in this section, you'll also look for supporting evidence that supports that it's a problem. So you will be asked to go to the literature, go to PubMed and find three pieces of evidence that support this campaign. In part two, you will be assessing who the target audience is. And so who is being asked to do the main behavior that they're trying to make happen? Who are they? And you'll also assess um, a little bit more about them. Why do they not currently do this behavior? What is the price for them to do this new behavior? And then how does the campaign address the issue of price? 
And then in part three, you will assess the communication tools. And so you're going to assess the products that the campaign created, the placement of the campaign materials, the promotion activities. Basically, how is the campaign doing in communicating with the audience? Are they providing useful tools that will make a change? And in this section, you'll also assess um, things like readability, plain language, health literacy levels. I'm assuming you want a good grade on that final report. And so what you need to do to get a good grade is you need to thoroughly answer those questions. So when a question asks for an example, you need to give specific examples. I'm giving you an example here. So here's something, say, if you were assessing a smoking cessation campaign. This is a tool or a um, screenshot directly from a website of a smoking cessation campaign. And you would use this as an example of how well they're doing with using plain language um, and providing information for people with lower health literacy. So you might describe this particular tool. Notice how they're using visuals. Notice how the language is nice and simple and direct and logical. And so you would assess whether or not you think this is a good example of health communication. Another tip I have for you is to make sure that you thoroughly review all of the campaign material. So the campaigns that are given to you in the directions actually have two websites. One website is through the Ad Council that describes the campaign. And in this, on the Ad Council website, you'll get an overview of why the campaign is needed. It's where you'll find some of that evidence. And then you, the campaign also has their main website. So be sure to go to that main website and thoroughly review everything it has to offer. So I have an example here. This is just a screenshot of Feeding America, which is an anti-hunger campaign. And this is the screenshot of just their banner at the top. But if you click on each of these things, it takes you to very useful content. So for example, that red donate button, that's an example of shrinking the price or shrinking the change. Um, that donate button is in red. It draws your attention immediately. It's at the top of the page. It's very easy to see. And so what this does is it makes it very easy for the audience to donate. It shrinks that price. They don't have to go hunt for where do I donate. It's right there. It makes it easy. The same can be said for the Find a Food Bank. This is a tool that they have added to their website. When you click on that, it will take you to a search engine and you put in your location and all of a sudden you find food banks near you that you can donate to. So this is a tool that they created um, in order to shrink the price or shrink the change. And then another um, example is if you clicked on that Hunger in America section, you would find all of the background information that you need for that evidence that you need to talk about. So thoroughly review the campaign material. You'll notice that the directions in the questions, they do ask you to apply concepts from our book in a couple of different places. Don't ignore that. You will lose points if you don't actually apply concepts from our book to the campaign. You also have to be specific. So you can't just say this campaign directs the writer and not explain what that means. If you think that the campaign is directing the writer, then explain why. It, give an example of what specifically is it doing to direct the writer. I've just given you a list here of all of the different concepts that our book has introduced to us throughout the semester. And this is just to give you an idea of some of the things that you might see reflected in the campaign. You're certainly not going to discuss all of these, but one or two of these are definitely reflected in the campaign that you review. And so I'd like you to identify them and explain how this concept applies to the campaign.